my girlfriend got an essay ed while in the process of cheating on me and changed her story at every turn. I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes trying to figure out how to start this. My head is completely spinning and my thoughts are just all over the place. I guess with the backstory, I've been dating Sarah, not using real names for just under two years now. She has a close friend John, whom she's known since she was a child. I never liked him. He was always a little creepy, blatantly flirted with Sarah for the entirety of our relationship, and made occasional passes that I was not comfortable with. So cut to like two weeks ago, Sarah and I were invited to a gathering or party by a mutual friend. I had a workshop for work that night, so I couldn't attend, and with current circumstances, I was never going to be inclined to go anyway. I didn't want Sarah to go either, but she was very adamant, and I guess I just didn't want an argument, so I said fine. We ended up running into John later that day, and he mentioned the same party and asked us if we had been invited as well. My girlfriend told him she was going but I wasn't, and he got this weird smile on his face and said something along the lines of, if you're going, I guess I have to go. Just something about his smile and the way he said it really rubbed me the wrong way. Plus, I didn't want to be possessive but the idea of the both of them together all night at a party did not sit well with me. After we got back to our apartment, I told her, a bit more firmly this time, that I'm not comfortable with her going to the party, especially with him there. She told me I was overreacting and shut down the conversation at that. I'm sure most of you can figure out where this is going. I went to the workshop, and she went to the party. It got to be like 2am, and she hadn't gotten home, nor was answering my calls. Naturally, I was incredibly worried. About an hour later, one of her friends called me and told me she was found unconscious at the party and driven to the hospital. She was essayed by John, and after spending two days, including that night, at the hospital and talking with the police, I took her home. She told me John drugged her and dragged her upstairs, where it happened in one of the bedrooms. The house the party was at is very large. She was an absolute mess. She didn't want to go outside, she wasn't eating, and she had terrible nightmares. I did everything I could to comfort her through this process. I was devastated for her and hated to see her like this, but I know this makes me sound like a terrible person. I don't blame her for John assaulting her, but I couldn't get the fact that I tried more than once to dissuade her from going to the party, specifically saying that her being with John makes me uncomfortable out of my head. I feel I could have done more to protect her, and she should have listened to how I felt. Important side note. It turns out John is literally living garbage. After her assault, we both felt it was best to get justice. There were drugs in her system, and all the physical indications of S.A. We immediately filed a restraining order, and the police opened an investigation. Within the span of a week after news had gotten around, two other girls came forward with similar encounters with John, so the guy is basically a serial attacker. As of now, my girlfriend is still in no better shape than she was two weeks ago. She gets panic attacks out of nowhere. She's lost like 15 pounds and absolutely refuses to leave our apartment, even to seek therapy. I was committed to taking care of her and being there for her, but I got a call from one of my close friends, Sam, this morning. It was a long conversation, but it basically boiled down to him as well as many others at the party that night. Sarah flirted with John the entire beginning of the party. According to him and the people he had been talking to, she was at the very least matching, if not being the initiator, in these exchanges with John. He also recounts that she wasn't blackout drunk or seemingly that out of it, and worst of all, Many saw her holding John's hand and taking John upstairs. At this point, I feel like I want to vomit. He told me he wanted the situation to cool down a bit before telling me, and was going to tell me after the party what happened. But with her being taken to the hospital under the circumstances, he didn't feel it was the right time. I decided not to assume anything, and asked her about the specifics of what happened that night. She tried to tell me the same thing, that she was drugged and dragged to a bedroom. But when I told her what Sam had told me, the color completely drained from her face. She started to panic, and I did my best to calm her down, but it was at least 30 minutes before she could catch her breath to speak. She was sobbing, but she was coherent enough to understand and basically confessed to cheating on me. She said she was drunk and hadn't been out for so long that she wanted some adventure. She admitted she was the one who took John to the bedroom and wasn't dragged there against her will. She kept apologizing and saying it was a terrible mistake and that nothing else was a lie. He did us a her. I believe the last part, as far as I can understand now, was when they were in the bedroom fooling around when he slipped something into here or something like that. Then he forced himself on her. I don't know what to do anymore. She was S.E.E.D., but to me, everything before that was her still intending to cheat and actively cheating on me. I am devastated, and I don't even want to look at her right now. I left the apartment and am currently at Sam's house. I don't know anything anymore.
She lost her job to COVID. I pay rent for the apartment where her name isn't on the lease and groceries. She's become completely emotionally dependent on me the past few weeks. If I did break up with her, she would have nowhere to go. And as much as I resent her, I don't want something terrible to happen to her. Please help. I need advice and don't know what to do. My girlfriend was essayed by a friend at a party I was uncomfortable with her going to. I found out she lied and omitted the fact that she was in the process of sleeping with him that night anyway. She is both financially and emotionally dependent on me, and I need advice. Edit. There's been a lot of responses in a short time, so I thought it would be best to address some things here. First off, I've been made aware that two posts in somewhat similar situations have been posted to this sub in the past two weeks or so. I don't know what I could post here to prove this is true without exposing my privacy, so I'm sorry, but all I can do is give you my word. I'm just here looking for advice. I don't think this is something someone should be fantasizing about for a karma farm. It's completely upended my life. The second thing is that people are questioning Sarah's account of the events. I didn't include every detail because I'm just trying to get my thoughts out. But her story matches the other two women who came forward in terms of the pattern of John's behavior. The two other women were also initially in a consensual environment before he drugged them and assaulted them. From what they've said and posted, a large part of the reason they didn't come forward was because it started as consensual, and they thought that would make them not be believed. I also didn't want to get too graphic, but the nature of Sarah's assault was very violent, and not something most anybody would consent to, so that may be why he drugs them first as well. She had and still has traces of large bruises around her neck and other parts of her body, as well as scratches and gashes. I don't really doubt at all that she was indeed assaulted. The drug found in her system was ketamine, and while Sarah did enjoy partying, she never did anything harder than weed. Third, Sarah has been living abroad for school since starting college. Her parents have been made aware of the situation, but coming from a very religious background and concerned for her well-being, they aren't exactly supportive, nor have they put in the effort to come see her. She never had many close friends for as long as I've known her other than John. I don't know where she would go if I told her she couldn't stay at my apartment. Update. Hey everyone, sorry it's taken so long for this update and the lack of replies on the previous post. I needed some time to sort out the situation, but I did read as many replies as I could, and I appreciate all the advice and messages, especially from those who had been put in similar situations as me. I guess I should start by clearing a few things up. First off, to everyone who thought my story had holes in it, it definitely did, and I'm sorry for that. At the time and even now, I was missing a lot of information, and was filling in the holes as best I could with what I had. I also didn't want the post to get too long, so I left out information that I guess would have painted a better picture of my situation. I'll try my best to include those missing details. If you're just interested in the update, skip down a few paragraphs. So details about John. He is part of Sarah and I's social circle and lives quite close to us. Some of the behavior from John towards Sarah that made me uncomfortable throughout the course of our relationship included constantly making comments about her body, putting his arm around her every chance he could, asking her to go with him on a trip to Europe last summer just the two of them, poking her breasts when she's wearing tight clothing, saying things like I'm lucky I met her when I did, or she would have been with him by now etc. It's not any one thing, but accumulation of everything that made me uncomfortable with her spending a lot of time with him. She never encouraged his behavior, at least when I was around, but didn't actively discourage it either, despite us openly talking to her about my boundaries. She just brushed it off as them knowing each other for so long and being comfortable with one another. A few smaller details, which I guess were relevant, I should mention. 1. We are not in the US. While COVID is still obviously an issue in our country, our area is relatively COVID-free, and everyone going to the party Sarah went to was part of our larger social circle. It was at a large condo a friend of ours was renting for the summer. It was not some open-air party with 100-plus people. Still dumb, I know. There were 30-ish, maybe 40 people there, so in hindsight, yeah, no one should have been at the party to begin with. Lastly, clearing up both Sarah and I's financial situation. I am lucky enough to have my parents pay for my tuition and whatever scholarships didn't cover, so I can focus my resources on just day-to-day -day living costs like rent, groceries, etc. Sarah, on the other hand, was pretty much thrown to the wolves after finishing high school. Her parents, as I stated in my edit, are very religious and very controlling, so they told Sarah they were only going to pay for her schooling if she went to a local college. She refused and came to my school. She lived in residency for her first two years, which were covered by financial aid. I got my apartment about a year ago, and with COVID and her not wanting to go back home, we decided it would be best if she moved in with me. 
Her finances are basically completely tied up on tuition and student loans, so I offered to keep paying full rent despite her living with me full time. Actual update. Oh boy, I wish I could say things have gotten more clear in the past week. But honestly, it's been a total clusterfuck, and it's only gotten worse. I spent a few days at Sam's reaching out to friends and trying to get a clearer picture of what happened that night before going back to talk to Sarah. I got told the same story multiple times, that she was the one who started flirting with John and led him upstairs. I should say right now that in my first conversation with Sarah confronting her, she didn't explicitly say she had intended to sleep with him that night. She just confirmed she took him upstairs. She was basically having a panic attack throughout the entire conversation, so I had a hard time pushing for clarity. So by this point in my heart, I was trying to find any excuse at all for her to save our relationship. But my mind was telling me that the relationship was over, at least for the time being. But as many of you commented, despite my obviously grief over losing a two-year relationship, I decided I'd be willing to let her stay in my apartment again, rent-free, until at least the end of October to sort out other living arrangements and support. I called her about three days after staying at Sam's and told her I'm willing to listen to her side of the story, but I need the complete truth about everything, and she agreed so I went back to my apartment later that evening. We sat down, and I asked her about what really happened that night. She started crying right away, but not panicking, and told me she had to tell me something about herself. Sarah has always been into the partying scene more than me. I've never really been comfortable around drugs or that environment in general, but I went with her anyways, about once a month or so. On the other hand, she would have girls' nights out and parties pretty much every weekend. Right at the beginning of our relationship, I told her I'm not really comfortable being with someone who is involved with hard drug use. My brother has a history of addiction, and I've seen what it can do to somebody and the people around them. She told me that's fine since she only drinks and smokes weed occasionally. Well, it turns out that for about a year now, she started doing harder drugs at parties when I'm not there. And her, girls' nights, were often just her, and some from our social circle, including going to a friend's apartment to do shrooms. I was shocked to say the least, and I didn't even know what to think in that moment. I just tried to ask her more about what happened on the night she was assaulted, and if she was intending on cheating on me that night. She comes clean and tells me she did lead John upstairs, but she swears she wasn't trying to sleep with him, but wanted drugs. He told her it was cocaine, but obviously it was not since only fentanyl and alcohol showed up in her system at the hospital. She told me he immediately started coming on to her, but she tried to fight him off, but eventually she was too drugged out to fight back. After consoling her for a while, I asked her what her relationship with John was really like before, and if they did anything together before what happened that night. She admitted that they made out a few times before around Christmas last year, but promised it didn't go any further than that. She was begging me to forgive her, and that she needed me in her life. She was just in a rebellious phase because of her upbringing. I didn't know what to believe anymore, and I still don't, to be honest. I was just completely overwhelmed by everything, so I told her I needed to clear my head and left again. Sam was nice enough to let me stay at his place again. I talked to some of my friends who she said she was doing drugs with, and they confirmed. I was pretty upset at them for hiding it from me, but they told me she basically forced them to keep it a secret from me. It feels like so much of my relationship was a lie. She wasn't the person I thought she was, and she lied constantly for who knows how long. At this point, my mind is basically made up, so I call her and tell her it's over. But she can stay at my apartment till the end of October but only if she finds a therapist and gets help during that time. She basically lost it during the call, but my mind was made up, so I just said I'd be staying at Sam's for a while and hung up. I wish that was the last of the SHT that happened, but literally a day after that, I started getting spammed with hate messages and calls from friends, relatives and people I didn't even know. It turns out she's posted all over social media about how I was breaking up with her because she was SA ed, and I was kicking her out with nowhere to go in these COVID times. She also wrote that I've been emotionally abusing her after her assault, victim blaming her, and stopping her from getting a therapist. I'm completely lost. I'm furious and heartbroken. I can't even describe all the emotions I felt. I called her again that night, and told her she has two weeks to move out now, and I don't want to hear from her again. I had to spend the past week playing damage control, trying to clear my name on social media, and calling friends and family. I was ostracized by co-workers, though luckily my boss was on my side. I was getting doxxed with unalive threats, and my life basically fell apart. Sam, thank God, was completely understanding through all of this, and said I could stay at his place until Sarah moved out. She's moving out on Friday, but I don't want to go back to that apartment. I've had to cut out friends. My reputation is now in the garbage. I lost the first and only person I've ever loved, 
I don't know anymore. I Loki want to unalive, but I'll find a therapist sooner or later. I just feel numb to everything. I don't even know if I'm right or wrong in this situation anymore. I hope I haven't rambled on too much. I know this post is really long, but thank you really to everyone who showed support in the last post. It meant a lot. TLDR. My girlfriend lied to me about the night she was essayed. It turns out she was with him that night to get drugs, had been doing hard drugs behind my back for months, cheated on me with the friend that ended up assaulting her, and then lied on social media about how I had been emotionally abusing her despite my best effort to support her, causing my life to fall apart. Edit. Someone's comment made me realize she was still lying to me the second time I talked to her. She changed her story about what she was drugged with, and I didn't even realize it. I was not told by the hospital what she had in her system, and I'm not very knowledgeable on drugs in general. All that information I had came from Sarah. I don't even know if she was drugged against her will at all at this point. God, I'm doubting everything now. This is not the person I thought she was. I don't even care. She's out of my life now. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.